Today on BRS TV, we're going to explore Red Sea's two reef energy products. First, we'll hit on our take on if feeding has any real value, then shift to their take on coral nutrition and the reef energy program. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV, where each week we hit on a new topic related to reefing. This week, we're going to dive into the Red Sea reef energy products. Much of what the reefing community knows about proper coral nutrition is a mix of science, educated guesses, and anecdotal experiences we share with each other. One of the issues I and many other reefers have struggled with is, do you even need to feed corals at all? I'll give a really definitive answer on this one, absolutely not. You can have a successful tank without any type of coral food products. There are too many successful tanks that don't feed corals directly to really disagree with this. However, I'm also willing to give another very definitive answer. There are various degrees of success in how you get there. I'm convinced that the right type of coral foods dosed responsibly will increase growth, possibly coloration, and overall coral health. Health is the one that's most important to me. Sooner or later, I'm going to do something to the tank that will stress the corals. Forget to fill my auto top off, my air conditioner breaks and the tank overheats, forget to fill my alkalinity jug, improperly mix my salt water, you get the point. All of these things will result in stress on the coral itself as well as a symbiotic algae known as zooxanthellae within the coral's tissue. In some tanks, these types of stresses have seemingly no long-term effect on the tank or corals. In others, even small changes in the environment result in coral death. So what's the difference? I believe it generally revolves around the overall health of the organism and its ability to deal with environmental stresses. Since few of us are marine biologists, how do you evaluate coral health? Well, we look for tissue and polyp health and changes in coloration, but the biggest sign of health is growth. Growth in itself is a really good indicator of health. Generally speaking, most living organisms use energy in the following manner. First for metabolic function and tissue repair, second for growth, and third for reproduction. Okay, so how does reef energy fit into all this? Well, there's seemingly hundreds of products and methods of feeding corals, ranging from hand feeding prepared prey, raising live prey, broadcasting tiny prey, and even more advanced methods revolving around dosing broken down nutritional elements directly to the tank. It's this last method that Red Sea really focuses on. One of the things I really like about this product line in general is they've gone out of their way to really explain their methodology and approach to how this works. Most companies are really vague and provide no real information about their products and how they're actually supposed to work. More or less, I think most of them are producing amino acid, carbohydrate, and vitamin products simply as a me too approach to selling products in response to the advancement in some of the Europeans' research and the ultimate success they've had with their product lines. Red Sea has done a pretty good job showing their research, methodology, and concept on how these products are going to work. They provide useful information on their website, packaging, and downloadable PDFs. Let's be honest though, who reads all this stuff these days? One thing they've done I think is rather cool is produce a series of videos on their entire line of reef care products. I personally think they did an exceptional job of explaining their concepts in a language the average reefer can understand. Using this information as well as speaking to some of their scientists over the years, this is my understanding of their approach to coral nutrition. First is their research has led them to the conclusion that most corals get 85% of their nutrition from their symbiotic algae and light. The corals in zooxanthellae are unable to synthesize the other 15%, so they must be provided from other sources, either captured or absorbed, to provide ideal nutrition in coral health. In the aquarium, I think some portion of this 15% is provided by broken down fish foods added to the tank, and likely why you see successful tanks without coral specific foods or additives. However, the trend these days is to closely watch the amount of fish food added to the tank to reduce nutrients like nitrate and phosphate. It's also Red Sea's goal to provide as many of the essential elements as possible and a complete 15% to maximize coral growth, coloration, and health. Second is corals do capture prey in the wild, and you can see this response with many LPS corals with large oral discs. However, many corals like SPS have too small of an oral disc to capture virtually any prey. They don't have enough stinging cells to kill and capture prey, or they don't have a digestive system capable of breaking down the cellulose walls of some prey. A lot of corals like this also don't have a method of attracting prey or actively moving towards prey. 
So it's theorized and very likely that they're capturing particulate matter that's suspended in the ocean's waters and flows freely to the coral. These particulates are also referred to as dissolved organic matter comprised of amino acids, fatty acids, carbohydrates, and vitamins. Third, they've done a lot of analysis on the net energy gain from capturing and digesting prey. Net energy meaning the total amount of energy found within the prey minus the energy required to digest and break the prey down into these elements. Considering all of these elements, they've developed a program based on providing the 15% with essentially pre-digested sources of these nutrients. Part A is comprised of mainly carbohydrates, amino acids, fatty acids, and suspended protein flocks, all of which are necessary for metabolic functions like protein production and soft tissue regeneration. Part B is comprised of a concentrated solution of vitamins and marine amino acids, which they found were important parts of core nutrition and limiting factors. They also found the included vitamins are an important precursor to the proper formation of proteins. All of these elements found in this product are marine-based. Dosing these products is super simple. It's just a few milliliters per 25 gallons of water dosed every day. One of the nice things about this product is it's super inexpensive to try and you're not committed to anything other than the cost of the product itself, which is affordable to basically any reefer. I will note that they're not the only company out there that has developed an amino acid and carbohydrate product. And while all of them have their loyalists, most of them share one thing in common. These are all concentrated sources of nutrients and biologically available to a wide variety of organisms in the tank. Just like fish food, this isn't a case where more is better. The goal is to add enough for the corals to utilize without causing nutrient-based issues like algae and brown slime biofilm. So start slow and adjust as needed. Let us know how you feed your corals in the comments area down below. We often learn as much from you guys as you do from us, and your comments are super valuable to newer reefers. If this is your first time with us, we do this every week, so subscribe and join in on the conversation. See you all next week with another episode of BRS TV.